What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey, and welcome back to another Miniature Rescue. Last week, I was going through a drawer looking for some old grots, and while I did find those and repaint them, I also discovered a handful of other models that I'd kind of forgotten about. These were models that I had set aside that needed a whole bunch of work and that I wasn't sure what to do with at the time. Now some of those are still in that category, although I think that Commander Dante is looking pretty sweet right now, maybe? Eh. But in particular, the two old metal dwarves are in a desperate state and really need some help right now. I also have a spearhead of dwarves and they'd be perfect. These models are sweet. The old dwarves are a lot like, you know, old goblins and orcs, just dripping and oozing with that personality and that handcrafted charm. They also hold up surprisingly well against their modern counterparts, which is really what got me interested in taking on this project this week. Since finishing my spearhead army of fire slayers and almost completing an actual full 2000 point army, doesn't take a lot with these guys, I have been wanting to try and fix the largest issue that this army actually has. Now, it's probably an entire video all on its own. This army has a ton of issues. But what I mostly mean is the lack of variety. This army is very samey same, and I feel that by exploring some of the older models, or at least the ones that I have, there might be some insight into how to tackle that problem for the future. Taking a closer look at these models, you can see that they have thick layers of paint that just need to come off. The banner model also has a few more issues to take care of, including bent horns on the helmet, hot glue pretty much covering the whole bottom half, and the staff that he's holding is actually being held together by maybe hot glue and I think just paint. I think the paint is actually holding this together. Some work will be needed to get these looking table ready, and luckily they are made purely of metal. We can just toss them into a jar of acetone and that paint should get eaten up really quickly. Important note though, before you drop a mini into an acetone bath, remove the plastic base because it will melt and you will be sad. Yeah, I've done that. So the models get dropped into the acetone and within minutes, the paint becomes soft. You can see it coming up from the metal with just a bit of swirling around. Taking the models out of the bath and using a toothbrush, the paint just melts away. Sometimes you get deposits of paint that are tough to get up, even after soaking for a little bit, but rinsing and repeating the process will cut through and get that paint off. Otherwise, you can use a soft wire brush to really get in there and get in those recesses to get that paint out. Personally, I like using a soft wire attachment on my Dremel. So I get that hooked up and do a few passes over the models. I like this process because it cleans off that extra paint, but it also shines up the metal and makes it basically brand new. It's a very satisfying process that you really only get with metal models like these. After a good shine, I can continue to clean up the model by cutting away any excess metal and sanding down some of the rougher areas, especially the mold lines. Now these models aren't perfect and that will come across in the final paint job, but they look cool and that's really what I'm after here. Now that these models are cleaned up and ready to go, it's time to get them on bases. The plan is to use them in my current Fire Slayer's army, so they need to mostly match the newer models. Doing a quick comparison, you can see that the Slayer is almost the same, like the same size. A little bit on the bulky end, but that's hand sculpting for you. The other one is quite a bit different. This little dwarf Rune Maker, took me a while to figure that one out, doesn't quite fit, but I need him to stand at least as tall as the one that I'm using, which is a rune smiter, and he's even standing in for something else. So it's not like it really matters, but he looks cool, and I just need the dude in my arm. So I grabbed some rubble from an old 3D printed base I won't be using, and broke off a piece. Having the rune maker sit on this will give him about the same height as the other model. Perfect for this use case, and he looks even cooler on his own little hero rock. Both models get glued down, and sand is used to fill in the rest, just PVA and sand.
As far as paint goes, I want to keep things pretty simple, so naturally I go straight for my airbrush and complicate it right off the bat. Not really though. I'm going to start off with a layer of darker dwarf skin and move up to a lighter one shooting from above, really trying to follow the zenithal highlight of white that I put over the black primer. Nothing special here, but it helps guide the painting later on and just makes it a little bit easier. From there, I can start blocking in the rest of the base coats. In particular, the Rune Maker becomes much easier to look at once all of the hair is painted in. It's weaving all over the place and covering most of the model. That can make it hard to pick things out and know what you're actually painting. So focusing on the largest piece of the model and making sure there is a nice base coat will just help me see the rest of what needs to be painted. The main accent color I have on this army is red, so I'm going to carry that over to these so they match well enough. Red for the pants and red for the little rune shield. The next largest part of both models are all the metallic bits. Weapons, runes, and ornaments all get covered in a dark silver. This coats really well over everything, really just separating everything out. Once again, making it easier to see individual details and getting a nice base coat for colors like gold to go down and look its best. So the main base coats are down and the fun part can really begin, picking a lighter skin tone to really define the not so small muscle details on the body and face, using a glaze of reddish purple to create dimension and shadow in that skin, and picking out individually sculpted strands of hair with a brighter orange. It's the small bit of added paint that really gives shape to these models, and you can see how much detail the sculptor was able to get into this tiny little dwarf. It always amazes me when I work on these older models how good they actually look and how much they still hold up. Of course, there are drawbacks. There are weird shifts where the mold probably slipped or where a piece doesn't quite fit together, but getting the model painted really makes those issues disappear for me. I'm looking at these as full models and not the small pieces that they're made of. The paint covers up issues by taking your attention away from them and saying, you know, check out this sweet hair instead of, you know, the knuckles where the mold lines are impossible to get off. I also feel like I found an answer to getting these models to look a little bit different, not so samey same, right? They all have skin, so skin color can vary, which I already have going in my army, so that's fine. But the older sculpt presented a fun opportunity to change up the color of the pants a little bit and really make them stand out. So maybe splitting colors for accents and going with something fun and bright is actually the answer. Orange hair is cool, but what about stripes or purple pants? Lots to think about for sure. These will fit perfectly into my Fire Slayer's army, and I am super excited to put these down on the table, which I did get the opportunity to do after I finished this. And the thing is, these likely haven't been seen by a ton of people. The fact that they're even on the table is incredible on its own, and I'm excited to see that reaction. Sharing the passion for miniatures is something that I love doing, and even with one or two models at a time, models like this help me do just that. So thank you again for joining me on another Miniature Rescue. If you liked something about this video, please consider hitting that like button, sharing this video with your hobby friends, and subscribing for more Miniature Rescues. If you would like to help out this channel and save another mini, please consider joining the Patreon, as it is the absolute best way to do that. And I really couldn't do this without that support, so thank you very much. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. Oh, and here are some awesome old dwarfs ready to hit the table and show people what metal models are really made of. Thanks again.